all our people online, inshaAllah Allah address everyone, bless everyone and uh, immense uh, support and comments and all the support pouring in and all the participation inshaAllah Allah address everyone and bless everyone and, and grant them all very blessed Ramadan inshaAllah with immense lights and immense openings to safeguard ourselves against the difficulties opening upon this earth. InshaAllah with the love of Sayyidina Muhammad as our umbrella and shield so that Allah's Divinely grace to dress us and bless us and to forgive us our shortcomings in which Allah is not granting based on a station we achieved but because of the love we have for Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, what is uh, this book, Tazkiyat al Awliya? Can we read this? Forgive me for my ignorance. Walaykum as salaam, yes. I think they have PDFs on them, they have the actual books. I don't know if you can find actual copies. I know that they have online translations and, and PDFs on Tazkiyat al Awliya. The life of awliyaullah with the historical accounts of uh, very pious personalities and their experiences. For a modern audience that, that are not raised in these understandings, don't have families sort of giving examples and, and stories of these awliya because before traditional families would give the examples to their families and to their children. They would tell the stories of the lives of saints and, and their piety and their experiences. By virtue of those stories we would understand the way and the, the way of piety, the, the, the level of passion and the level of mercy that they showed. But when these stories are taken away then people's concept of rahmah, mercy is then taken and what's put in its place is the concept of fear and everything is driven by fear. So that becomes a, a very dangerous way of, of uh, being taught is that people forget the stories of mercy and then the modern day corruption teaches based on fear. And they teach the fear to the people but to their own hypocrisy they're completely something different. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. And that then keeps people under a oppression of fear. So there's many, many, many examples of how they, they're sort of corrupting people's understandings and you can't make hajj for people, you can't make umrah for somebody and then you, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't read Fatiha, you can't… all these different restrictions that they talk about and none of which are true and this is a, a difficulty put upon the nation. So when we read the story of very pious souls and you see the level in which they had mercy, the level in which they had a love then it's a, a great learning and an understanding. Ya Ulumuddin by Imam Ghazali is also a very recommended book for Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah and the people of uh, Taskiyah, the awliya, the people of Taskiyat al-Nafs and the Sufi path. So these are some traditional books that become harder and harder to find because of the, the groups that are controlling Islam and banning these books of moderation and love. Ya Ulumuddin 
So Imam Ghazali again was uh, very famous, very sort of a necessity that every student was supposed to read that set of books to understand and to be taught by these realities. Allah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam Is there such a thing as being too hard on our nafs? Can our nafs truly retaliate? Yeah, that uh, there's always a, a hikmah in how we deal with ourselves and train ourselves. And the nafs can re retaliate and usually like a slingshot it winds, winds, winds and then shoots off. So that's why tariqah then teaches the way of moderation. Uh, the other groups they try tas their taskiya, their way of purification is they say very hard things of which they really can't achieve. They can do, so as a result they stop doing it but they still preach it and then they enter into oceans of hypocrisy. So you see the people who come for tabligh and they come and say all these things and they have all these like way difficult rules which you know they're not following, they probably thought they could, they couldn't keep it but they decided, no we'll still preach it. So they preach very difficult rules of which they begin not to follow, so then it's just preaching hypocrisy and then it makes the servant enter into a state of hypocrisy in which they become corrupt and that's the, the great danger. So the tariqahs come and teach that, base your understanding on moderation and they pray that Allah judges us on a curve. And that's what's important that if the shaykh is teaching about love and kindness and compassion then if uh, we say things that are wrong Allah is compassionate inshaAllah with us because we were compassionate to His servants. So judge not for you shall be judged means the, the way in which you want to present your case is the exact way in which Allah will judge you when your file comes into His presence. So this was Mawlana Shaykh's teaching always for us is assume that we are nothing and no one and that, Ya Rabbi I'm trying my best to teach this way of love and compassion and for all my things that I do wrong that judge me based on this level of compassion. And as we taught to people inshaAllah Allah addresses us and judges us with the same scale that is forgiving and merciful and compassionate. So this is important in our own life and our testing with Allah That's what's important is the way we teach is because of our understanding and fear of Allah So if you're rigid and hard all the time then that's how you're going to meet your Maker and that's very scary. So that's not… that. that's to be avoided in our lives inshaAllah. So we teach based on love and compassion and mercy and try our best to stay within the guidelines of what Prophet brought for us and its understanding and its hikmah. Because many of these people will recite a hadith and not apply the hikmah of the holy hadith in our current times and current events. So alhamdulillah that Allah guided us to the ways of tariqah and whom Allah guides is rightly guided, whom Allah doesn't guide can find no guidance. So when they follow the guides of Allah that means then they are rightly guided inshaAllah. Uh, <clears throat> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. In the book of Hajj you mentioned that each month is represented by an Imam. Which Imam represents Ramadan? Thank you Sayyidi for your guidance. The ninth Imam inshaAllah. I don't have memorized by now the, the name of the ninth Imam but alhamdulillah each of the Imams and the Ahlul Bayt of Prophet watching over the nation and that their tajalis dressing upon the nation. 
So alhamdulillah that Allah gave to us such a blessed reality from the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad to the blessed family of Sayyidina Muhammad and the blessed holy companions of Sayyidina Muhammad Means this is an immense guidance to be given so much blessings and so much dressings. Uh, as Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Salaamu Alaykum Wa Alaykum Sometimes I ask a question Shaykh they throw me off uh, is that this one was okay the Hajj one but they, if they ask a question on a, on a particular phrase it has to be from our books. If it's not from our books it's assumption that what somebody read is something that was taught by us and our shaykhs, so not, not necessarily, yeah. So I think last night something was asked that wasn't in our subjects, yeah. The, those things we won't know, those are not been taught by us nor I don't know how they're phrasing it. So Naqshbandiyat al-Aliyah from Shaykh Daghestani to Shaykh Nazim to Mawlana Shaykh and then what was been taught of their system of realities and their way of realities is, is familiar to our heart and this is what comes to our heart from their presence. The other tariqahs may have phrased things differently. So if we just ask, what's this doesn't mean that that's something that was taught to us or even that way was taught. So we described before the, the, the mujaddidis, Naqshbandi mujaddidi, they teach completely different system of lataif. They think it to be true, they say it's their, for their opening. But our shaykh from Shaykh Abdul Faizid Daghestani Qatta Sallallahu Siru has a different way and different namings of the lataif and a different system of teaching the lataif. And alhamdulillah we know that way to be true. So alhamdulillah we teach from what we were learned and we want the students to read from our teachings. But if they read other teachings and come and ask us, what about this, what about that, then that's not from our course and curriculum to be more correct or understanding, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Forgive my ignorance, Sayyidi, when a strong ringing suddenly comes to our ears during daily activities, should oneself call madad instantly or and salawats on Prophet Muhammad No, you can make salawats, it's the, the ringing I don't necessarily think you have to make a madad unless you feel a vibration of energy coming and some sort of an attack is coming. But you make the salawat and durood al sharif and alhamdulillah. Maybe somebody's talking about you or something being mentioned and your being is, is being notified, inshaAllah. But all of these different things happen in life and begin to happen and feel this, feel that, hot is this, cold is this, all of that there's nothing to worry about. Do your practices, continue your connection and become familiar with every state and every condition that Allah puts His servant in and be patient in those conditions. Everything is based on salawats so that's the general rule is keep and always make your salawat and durood al sharif if you have a concern. And uh, always before you meditate or do anything you can make your madad and support always so that you're in a correct meditation and contemplation. And if certain things should happen to you and all of a sudden you feel hot, you feel cold, you feel the vibration, again your durood al sharif and make your quick connection. If you have time you can read the whole madad or just make the connection with the shaykh and connecting your heart with his presence that he be present with you in case of any difficulty inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Alaikum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, I find myself stuck at times while doing zikr or after before salah, my mind going in places, I don't really want it to go there. Is there any way we can keep our mind anchored in the now while meditating? 
that becomes the struggle in meditation. It's that meditation is not something easy, that shaitan wants to distract the servant into different uh, areas. Think about that, think about this. So keeping one's mind focused and one's heart focused is the great struggle. So that's why people should begin to try to meditate and figure or understand how difficult it is to keep yourself focused. So it's not something easy, it's actually the final state of tariqah where they would sit down and then teach the student to make their tafakkur and their contemplation after they learned all these different realities. But for the last days they're teaching it at the beginning because of the danger and the amount of corruption upon the earth is then make your connection and they're facilitating that opening with a tremendous power. So that people can feel that connection, feel their heart is connected and that they're not alone inshaAllah. And as a result they can feel the light of protection through the immense oceans of oppression and darkness that upon the earth inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi. You spoke, you spoke recently about uh, body movements and its energy. Uh, what kind of energy is created when mourning of Ahlul Bayt by chest beating done by millions? Is this positive or negative? The what? It's not allowed. Not in their madhab and not in other madhabs. So Ahlul Sunnah doesn't allow it and, and uh, even their own madhab <laughs> doesn't allow the harming of oneself. So this, this hurting of yourself and oh, exaggerating these, these, these things upon oneself is, is uh, for show and it has a danger of the nafs entering in. So that they feel they can outwardly show they're very in love with these personalities. And if the nafs grabs the person then they start to harm themselves. So if you've ever seen these evangelists that try to do healing and they come to a person, oh I'm going to heal you and they start to shake and the next person looking and feeling fearful that why he's shaking, I'm not shaking, I'll start to shake. Means that everybody's nafs will begin to enter into their acts of worshipness and become extremely exaggerated and then it becomes for show and that's dangerous. If you love the Ahlul Bayt then you contemplate the difficulty that was put upon them and the greatest gift that you can give to them is feed people, take care of people, love people, be of service to people for their sake. And that to understand and to love them and the suffering they, they endured with being patient with Allah's command in your own life and being, being good with good character. So those are the, the deeper realities that are being taught here and that's why the tariqah is teaching and we specifically teach about Ahlul Bayt and, and the reverence for Imam al Husayn salam. And uh, what can be accomplished with the good character and what they accomplished with their yaqeen. But if we reduce it to physical actions for show then you, you got the reward of a physical show. But more important to Allah is if you truly understood Amr Jabbar and the command and what he went through alayhi salam for his love for Allah and patience and through difficulties and trials and tribulation then emulate them, copy them to be patient through Allah's testing, to have the best of example. And they suffered for the sake of intercession and to intercede for the nation of his beloved grandfather Sayyidina Muhammad So our system of teaching is completely different than what they're teaching. They're teaching lahnat and cursing and to be angry and, and go out and be angry at a group of people saying, you did this but then you lost the whole point that Imam al Husayn was a huge awliya, most powerful of all on earth from these people. There is no one who can uh, achieve those stations other than Imam Ali and the Holy Companions. 
means the one whom Sayyid al-Shuhadan has to sign for anyone to be Ahl al-Basira. This is a title Allah gave, it's not just a, a, a nice and cute. It's Allah giving a title, Sayyid al-Shuhada, the, the master of those whom see and their shahood and they, they witness the Divine with what type of witnessing. Means for that master salam to sign on people then he wants to see the same character which was, I went through the difficulty I went through with my family for the sake of interceding upon the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad The very people who came to slaughter me, I will intercede for them. You see this, the lives of the shaykh is similar, that people are busy trying to attack him and bring him down and he's busy trying to save them. He's not fighting them, he's not taking his lecture pulpit and, and now cursing everybody on the internet and fighting them back and being aggressive and, and shaking on the member, screaming at people. No, he's busy like Imam and Hussain, busy trying to save the people and the people are busy trying to attack and take him down. And that's what they show is have this character, is to, to do what you do for the love of Prophet and that your struggle and your service will be rewarded by Allah You'll use that reward to intercede for the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad They didn't want anyone to curse anyone otherwise why would he have suffered like that? He suffered to intercede for people. Then you're turning around and cursing the same people he went and suffered for. So then he said, then he said why did I suffer for him if you're planning on cursing them? So means the haqqaiq is lost. But alhamdulillah they keep that alive through our hearts. So that, that has an immense reality that the, the, the immense reality of Imam and Hussain is a grand intercession and take your life with patience and, and perseverance and, and have good character in the face of uh, every rock and, and uh, every sword. And we told you before it doesn't come from Jewish people and Christian people. These swords that come are from Muslim people and that's what Imam and Hussain is, is giving to us as a teaching. It comes from the, from the munafiq of the nation and those are the ones whom have to be prayed for. That instead of building themselves and correcting themselves they're trying to destroy their own nation and that's the shame. So do your da'wah, do your good deeds, be good examples, don't curse people and uh, as a result patiently persevere through the difficulties and testings. Every time you… if you love these Ahlul Bayt then every time you want to complain remember how much they suffered and that should silence your mouth from complaints because the, the, the pettiness of what people complain about in these lives and in these questions and in all of these things that we, we've seen in our 30 years, could it compare to anything that they went through of being slaughtered in a field and, and, and all their children to be slaughtered in, in front of them before their very eyes, before they even take their last breath? And ayat al sabr that they're the sign of immense patience and realities. As a result Allah granted the title Sayyid al-Shuhada. Why? Because what his eyes had to see of his physical annihilation of his family and witness that in the desert, those very eyes and the immensity of its purity, that all its soul of blood and torment within its own children and all its loved ones, well that, that blood and torment Allah by means of that give a spiritual eyes that nobody can be second to. Because the one who say the shuhada means signs for everyone else's mushahada. So there are no greater seers than Imam al Hussein that were purified by blood, sweat, and tears. So these are these are immense realities and immense imams of the nation, and those are our gifts. So that all these twelve imams, their gift in Ramadan is that they pray for us. All these months up to the ninth and from the ninth all the way to the twelfth with Imam Mahdi salam, 
all the celebrations, all their love, all the events is that they're continuously praying for us and that every food and every meal and every goodness that we do in their names and in the name of all Ahlul Bayt and the name of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and the holy companions as they loved all the holy companions. These are the actions that bring us prayers and madad and support. That's why the shaykhs are teaching, we're not counting on our own deeds. So we're not the people sitting here thinking we have great deeds and, and Allah is so excited and happy by us. So the only deed we have worth mentioning is our love and our love for these holy souls. As a result they are praying for us inshaAllah, they pray for our Ramadan to be successful, they pray for our food programs to be successful, they pray for our families to be successful and our communities to be successful, our beginning and our end to be successful inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh uh, Can you please uh, share the understanding of the 40 governors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this planet and its realities? Did we teach something about 40 governors of Allah? No, that's what I'm saying, we're just throwing out random questions from all sorts of different places. I don't know 40 governors. Abdal maybe? No, I don't know about that. <laughs> Whatever is in our curriculum, Shaykh inshaAllah we, we go through that, that's why it's important to read the books. We have so many subjects that we've taught about, try to learn those subjects otherwise just to you know go into all these different things and the people whom are trying to study it will be thrown off by what does that have to do with anything? There are 40 abdal, there are different category of awliyaullah and then they have their responsibilities and our responsibility is to conquer the bad character. Our only thing Allah is going to ask us is when you take your last breath, not who the 40 abdal were and if you were one of them but who sat on your chair in your life. So anytime you do something in life and you're doing and taking a nightly account of yourself that, why did you say that, why did you do that, why did you act this way, who sat on the chair? It'll become very, very easy for us and Allah is only going to ask about that, that in your life on this earth who occupied your chair? And that's what our, our mission in life is to conquer this, this character, take these teachings and make the meditation, make the connection, understand the Divine, the Qudra and the energies and how to connect with the shaykh and to achieve the connection with the shaykh, not on how to read from Lahul Mahfuz. If you had that level of connection you would know it, it wouldn't be something that you would have to ask. So means but what you need to ask is that, how am I connecting with you and how do I make that connection to be stronger and you take the book, you read the book and then the curriculum that being taught has to be expanded. Then we can identify that you're reading it and then from what you're reading you're understanding that you're connected to your lataif, you're connected to the shaykhs, you annihilate yourself and every time you're, you're dreaming and, and seeing dreams of of all sorts of gifts coming to you and stations and maqams coming to you, then you have to divorce those. You have to tell yourself, that's not for me. So that not to let your ego enter into your state of annihilation in which you think now you've achieved great stations and Allah will show you, no you haven't because all of a sudden you start screaming and yelling at everybody in the room. And uh, at that moment Allah is showing you that how you thought your soul is sitting on your chair and you act like this. So those things are important shaykh, not reading loud mafuz and how to do that. InshaAllah. But I appreciate the questions, it was a nice, nice chant, it was a nice try. <laughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. Walaykum Sayyidi, the energy gets very heavy when I sit or talk to my mom and brother who are non-Muslims. Should I also mm. avoid them? It gives me anxiety. 
Yeah, that can be you know in two ways. It can be that as you talk to them nicely and politely, Allah may be sending a light that cleaning them. That could be one, again I don't know the circumstances in which this is happening. Or they could be doing things and having bad energy and it's an argument and fighting and then yes you feel the heaviness because you're, 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 you've lost or you lost the barakah of that association. And if shaitan is able to make the servant to become angered then he's winning and I think we have a talk on that like a chess game. That when you enter into the room and anything and anywhere you're about to go you have to be a few steps ahead that, oh I know when I go to visit these people there's going to be shaitan attacking me and shaitan comes through all of the relatives. There's no relative that he's uh, spared from. And he's coming to pose a question to flip your switch. So you try not to have your switch flip and if you're patient and, and able to keep your demeanor and you feel energy coming, that's maybe an energy for cleansing and purifying the people whom we love. Or if you're angry and, and being angered by people then that's something of a negative energy and that's bringing the person down inshaAllah. You just answered four questions Sayyidi. <laughs> there we go, <laughs> uh, As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. When the soul takes over the chair of authority, does the soul control the nafs at this stage? Yeah, this becomes now the, the, the great understanding for this example of the chair is now we're going to enter into Ramadan. That the chair of fasting, that you should be fasting Monday, Thursday is very difficult for those of busy lives or on medicines and sit and say, I want to fast and the, just the chair of fasting is very difficult. And it's not even difficult because you're starving unless you're on medication and your blood pressure is dropping, it's just difficult. So then you understand how difficult fasting voluntarily is because the nafs sits on the chair and absolutely says, no, 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 I'm, I enjoy my morning drink uh, coffee and I enjoy my afternoon lunch and I'm ready for my snacks and so it says, no way. And so people have very difficult time just voluntarily fasting unless they're naturally inclined not to eat and those are the kind of people that you have to chase them to eat, fasting is like easy for them. So that's… those are excluded from this example. But for the example of the chair you'll see that in Ramadan begins by Monday night, Tuesday night Allah sending a mercy. That chair is heated up where the Nafs and shaitan are, are now frightened. So when the servant is dedicated and say, I'm going to fast or I'm going to die, means the heated chair and the servant's soul is now seated upon that chair and excited to enter into Ramadan and the immensity of fasting. And as a result by day two, by day three the nafs is subservient and a servant of the soul, where the nafs is under the feet of the soul and reminding the soul at three in the morning that, please let's get some food, it's time for suhoor and we'll quote you the hadith and the suhoor is a blessing and make sure we fulfill the blessings, come on get up and, and it's blessed time and give you hadith and teaches you. So the, the nafs can be your buraq where it will actually take you through that process. And then tell you, time to eat, time to eat, get back home, where's our dates, pack your dates. It doesn't make you forget your dates. He says, pack your date, put them in the car, you're going to be late for your, your iftar and break, you can break in the car, you can do like this. So the nafs is facilitating everything. And then even when you break you realize it wasn't from hunger most cases, if you're in certain areas maybe it is. But most people in the West breaking they don't even feel they were hungry, they have their their coffees, their dates and they're good to go for another few hours of ibadah and worshipness. So it wasn't the hunger that was painful, it was just the nafs irritating and bothering the whole time. So Ramadan is a great learning experience. For the people of Tafakkur they understood that when, when they're committed 
and their soul is committed, this, the nafs will actually serve the soul. And that's the importance of doing your zikrs and your, your worshipness and your meditation. For every other month to achieve anything similar to that, your meditation and zikrs have to be strong, the Laila Khirat has to be strong, all of the recitations strong so that that chair is hot. Shaitan has a difficult time sitting on that chair directly like that. The nafs comes and realizes it's hot so then the soul can go more and sit more on there, do more of its worshipness, do more of its practices inshaAllah. So Ramadan is a great learning experience inshaAllah for that reality. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, How to remove cowardly character and the fear of pain that comes against faith during difficulties? Yeah, the durood the sharif inshaAllah, the hasbunallah huwa ni'mal wakeel that the, the ocean of fear and the fear of death means they're the opposite of faith. So how then to regain faith is the love of Prophet in which Prophet gave the hadith that, you don't have iman until you love me more than you love yourself. So how are you going to get iman? Is by loving Sayyidina Muhammad more than we love ourselves. And how we're going to achieve that is through the durood the sharif and the salawats. So as we're making salawats, as we're making salawat, this is our miraj into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad reciting the durood the sharif continuously all of this, this love and this engagement in moving towards the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad this is what he's talking about that you're beginning to love me more than you love yourself. So that you want to be charitable, you want to be giving, you want to give your time to that reality, you want to be of service to that reality because you want the nazar of Prophet upon you. So anyone who's living a life of khidmat and service of course they should be feeling the love of Prophet upon them because these are the ashiqeen and muhibeen of Sayyidina Muhammad And then those are the people whom Prophet mentioned to the holy companions, that's the amazing part. That anyone in this day and in this age with this love Prophet was thinking of us in the presence of the holy companions. And he gave us, he gave us a title that, these are my ashiqeen when he described to the holy companions, there is a day coming in which people will do anything to have one gaze of my face and these are my lovers. And the companions were shocked, he said, I thought, we're your lovers, he said, no you're my sahabi. And so of course you love me, you see me, you're with me but there's a people who have not seen me. They haven't experienced any of this, just Allah put into their heart this khatir, this want, this desire that they would do anything for a glimpse of Sayyidina Muhammad So imagine at that time Prophet was talking about us, that these are my lovers and ashiqeen. At that moment of course he's seeing them, knowing each one by their names. And as a result of conveying that hadith to the holy companions who were all the companions of yaqeen, they witnessed all of those people at that moment. At that very moment he spoke it, وسلم, the holy companions witnessed it. They witnessed all the lovers and ashiqeen and they attached themselves to these ashiqeen to pray for them and their madad and their support have brought them and called them into this path of love. So it's an immense reality that everything Prophet does, do and did is of an immense reality. When Abu Yazid was approaching the Divinely Presence because he says Allah but it's Divinely Presence and he reached to the Divinely Presence he was astonished. He said, all my life I thought I was loving you only to be astonished that when I arrived into your presence your love for me was more ancient 
and that your love called me here. So that to take away your nafs from your action, do you think that it's your love that taking you on this path and putting you there on that seat? No, because you don't put any anything upon yourself and, and glorification of ourselves. But it's Prophet more ancient love calling us, witnessing and looking at us because Allah showed, these people, these souls love you more than you can ever imagine, they have never seen you and they would do anything for a glimpse of you. Means nazar karam the holy gaze of Prophet when we described in the other surahs when Allah said, direct your face to these souls. The day and night they purify themselves and they're asking to be in your holy presence. And at that time Prophet showed these souls to the holy companions. By virtue of that hadith the holy companions witnessed the souls of these ashiqeen and their khidmat and their service is they attach themselves to these souls and that their nazar would be upon them because they love whom they love. They love the presence of Prophet There could be no greater khidmat than to make sure these souls reach to the one whom they love because they are the lovers of Sayyidina Muhammad Alhamdulillah, this way is the immense way of rahmah and mercy that we're being called into this presence, not by any cleverness and action of our own but by their calling and that their love is more ancient. And by virtue of that gift of love it calls for us a responsibility. That now you know that you're responsible for that love, you're responsible to make that one whom loves you and is calling you to his presence to be proud of us. And that's why we live a life and as best as we can to live a life of service. So his nazar karam, Janab al-Haqq that his, his holy gaze wasallam, that he be proud of us and pleased with us, that he didn't waste his vision and his love upon us. We tried our best to be worthy of that love and to live a life of service to the best of our ability inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaikum As Salaam wa In your previous talk you taught us how all creation were afraid of the trust but insan accepted it. Can you kindly help us to understand more of this reality? The, the trust Allah has given to insan in which Allah offered it to creation offered to the mountains, to all of the different creation that this trust I have, the ahad and covenant, will you carry it? And all creation was fearful of that reality. And then Son said, yes, waqalu bala. And this trust is the trust of faith, the trust of this light, the trust of the realities in which Allah has, has given to us. And that's when we describe that Allah said, I gave you all these opportunities to reach my Divinely Presence. I've given you immense, immense realities of light that no other creation has this light or this gift or this potential. Now what are you going to do with it? And that's then the responsibility of the trust and those whom Allah guides is truly guided. Why? Because you have to understand that what Allah is guiding to. When people say, no we're guided, you know that's a lesser understanding in which Allah brought somebody towards the lights of Islam and a guidance. But what Allah is describing is your ahad and your covenant. That I gave you a covenant, you said bala and now you are to achieve your covenant with Allah and that then requires guidance and that requires what? Bayat. For if you don't have bayat, you don't have the ability to complete your covenant because that's the reality of achieving. 
that you agreed that you would come onto this earth and that you would achieve your realities and that you would take the hand. The hand of Allah is with the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad and that hand is upon the ulul amr who inherit that reality and that Allah's hand is upon their hand, Ati Allah, Ati Rasul ulul amri minkum. So means all of these requirements is to reach the guidance. So people out there say, well I'm guided, say, mm, that's debatable. The reality of guidance is then the guidance back to your ahad, your covenant. And how could you reach your covenant if you're not on the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad And the only way to be on the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad are the turuqs, that's why they're called turuqs and path, istiqamu fi tariqat, that hold firm to your tariqah because that is the way to the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad That's when you listen to all these months of teaching, that's not something easy. And that's not just something random somebody can say, I have it because they need all of the guidance, all of the awrads, all of the protections so they can reach to the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad So the Muhammadan hands they're on this earth and these are the awliya that they are the real bayat where Allah's hand is upon the hand. Because their hand is touching the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad and Allah's hand is upon them. If you can find these real hands on earth then you hold on to it. Now you're on the step towards your real Islam and that your shahada becomes real because you are now witnessing. By witnessing the shaykh you are witnessing Muhammadun Rasulullah because they are Muhammadiyoon. And the light of Prophet emanating from them, from the Muhammadan gardens and Muhammadan paradises, inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifu wa salaamu ala mursaleen. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa hurmat Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. As Salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, Please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also. Be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.